Hey everyone, how's it going? So as July comes to a close, or maybe August begins, we are going to do the final legendary Pokemon in red and blue, Mew. Other than Moltres, the legendary Pokemon have performed really well so far, and people are very curious to see if Mew could even surpass Mewtwo. Now, there are a couple major advantages Mew has. One of them is that Mew literally can learn any TM. That includes signature moves like Soft Boiled, which is really, really great. The second major advantage it has is that it is part of the Medium Slow level up group, which is kind of an inaccurate name because for our purposes, it's actually the second fastest and prior to 21, it's actually the fastest level up group. And that's very important. The reason being is Mew's biggest disadvantage the fact that it just starts with one move, a 40 base power normal move, Pound. And of course, that's gonna make Brock difficult. And like with Zapdos, the key is to minimizing the amount of time we need to spend before we face Brock. So what I did was I battled the two bug catchers and any wild Pokemon since it will make a difference in leveling up. Then I'm gonna battle rival 1A, who I call 1A because he's optional and generally it's slower to go back and face him and facing him right away never makes sense because his Pokemon are way stronger than the bug catchers, so I generally don't. Here's an example where it does. Once I face him, I fight the final bug catcher and then the junior trainer, and after I defeat the Sandshrew, I've leveled up to level 14 at about 25 in-game minutes, which give or take is about 8 to 10 minutes slower than minimum battles. But the battle against Brock is also going to be kind of slow, and I was genuinely questioning whether it would be possible at level 14. Thankfully, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that Mew has a base 100 in every single stat, meaning it will get a critical hit 19.5% of the time. We're going to need a few of those critical hits because Brock likes to use Defense Curl and we have a 40 base power normal move. Additionally, we do want to have enough HP for Onix, and thanks to getting decent critical hit luck, I'm able to make it past the Geodude at 34 HP. Now, against Onix, you might notice that even when he uses Bide, I'm still using Pound because Mew's second move is Transform, a move that typically is associated with Ditto, but Mew also learns it. If we use Transform right away, we will become Onyx, and we'll be stuck with Tackle, Screech, and Bide, its three moves at five power points each. That isn't the best case scenario for right now, so I'm just going to have to hope I don't get critical hits while he's using Bide, and continue to go for Pound. However, as Onyx approaches about half HP, You'll notice I'm running out of pounds, so we're going to have to use Transform eventually. I decide to use it once I'm at 4 pounds remaining, because Brock went for Bide, and so this is as good a time as any. Now that I'm transformed, I'm going to hit Brock with a couple Screeches. Thankfully, it's a 3-turn Bide, and both of my Screeches connect, which is super useful. Now the idea is to go for Tackle until he uses Bide again. Once that happens, I'm going to use Screech. It doesn't matter if this hits, because I'm going to at least have 2 turns. And then I'm just going to use Screech so I don't take back any Bide damage. Now I'm going to go for Tackle, and you're seeing it's doing pretty decent damage with minus 6 in defense. I was really hoping Tackle would do enough to knock out Onyx, but alas, I use all 5 power points, and Onyx just has a little bit of health left, so I have to get lucky and go for Bide, and hope that Onyx does enough damage for me to knock it out, but not too much damage that I faint. Thankfully, that's exactly what happens. I knock out Onyx with Onyx's own Bide, and while the battle was rather lengthy, we have gotten by Brock relatively quickly, considering that we only had a single normal move in Transform. I'm pretty happy with this result. However, unlike with Zapdos, where we have Drill Peck and Thundershock to help us speed through the next part, we are stuck with Pound still, at least until level 20, where we get Mega Punch, which isn't exactly ideal because it misses like 20% of the time. And so as I save in Mount Moon, we're at 39 minutes or 9 minutes slower than the slowest legendary bird, Zapdos, and 17 minutes behind Articuno. Or to put it another way, we've taken roughly double the time. So it's not looking great for Mew. And I was hoping by the time we finished with all the trainers in Mount Moon, we would hit level 20 and would have Mega Punch for Misty's Gym. Turns out it didn't quite work out that way. In fact, even after defeating the Goldeen in Misty's Gym, I still was at level 19, meaning I at least had to face Staryu without Mega Punch. Now, by the way, the reason I want to face Misty first, not only is it because it's faster, but because Misty gives the TM for Bubble Beam, and there are two reasons why it's really good to have Bubble Beam at this point. 
Reason one is because most Pokemon at this point of the game have better defense than special. Plus, we don't have to go back to the Pokemon Center to restore our power points as often. So as I just said, I'm at level 19 while facing Misty, and hopefully I can get lucky, like with a crit against Star Unit won't take too long. Misty goes for X Defend, which isn't great. Obviously, Pound now does not knock out Star U. It goes for Water Gun, does barely anything, and I knock it out in three hits. Not bad. I level up and now have Mega Punch. Now the key is not missing or getting hit with critical hit bubble beams, that would be bad. Also, I didn't necessarily count on being outsped by Star Me. Misty goes for X Defend, which is pretty bad for time. As you can see, Mega Punch does around a quarter now. Thankfully, Starmie goes for Water Gun, and Mega Punch gets a critical hit. That's great, because the next hit will knock it out. I do then get Bubble Beam, which isn't a critical hit, and it doesn't really matter, because as long as I hit, which I do, Mega Punch knocks it out, and down goes Misty. Overall, that actually was kind of close to ideal, thanks to the critical hits I got. And now we can go ahead and face Rival 2. Now, I was worried Bubble Beam wouldn't quite be a two-hit KO, so I go for Mega Punch. It does over half, which is good. Thankfully, Pidgeotto doesn't go for Sand Attack. I'm able to go for Bubble Beam and then knock out Pidgeotto. Abra is such weak defense. I thought Pound might be a one-hit KO. I got a critical hit, so it was. That may have been the reason it was a one-hit KO, but Abra can't attack, so whatever. Now, Rattata has pretty awful stats, so I go for Bubble Beam since it's 100% accurate. It does knock it out in one hit. And the final Pokemon is Charmander, which I didn't pick for this reason, but hey, it's kind of nice that Bubble Beam will knock it out in one hit. The truth is, because Mew can learn every TM, it doesn't really matter which starter I picked, and I hadn't seen Charmander in a while, so that was one reason behind it. Couldn't pick Venusaur because of the psychic weakness. So I'm not sure if it was the best. Doesn't matter, I win. And truth be told, I don't really have much to talk about, so let's just show you that battle a second time, but at a few levels higher. But I did do one thing in the interim that I probably should mention. Sometimes I really like to stick to minimum battles, but in-game time is the most important metric. So I decided it would be smart, based on what I decided to do with Mew, to take the extra time and to get Body Slam. It's only slightly more powerful than Mega Punch, but it's 100% accurate, and frankly, I feel it saves way more time than the one battle it takes to go and get Body Slam. So I'm going to do that, and thus it's going to make Rival 3 even easier than Rival 2. Pidgeotto is close to being a one-hit KO with Body Slam, just survives, thankfully doesn't use Sand Attack. Raticate is a one-hit KO with Body Slam. I outspeed the Kadabra, another one-hit KO with Body Slam. And even though Charmander's evolved, it still can't stand up to Bubble Beam. And that's rival number three. Pretty good. We get cut. And I do just want to address this quickly. Some people have talked about using Mew and just using Mew, so it does all the HM moves. Unfortunately, that would just put it at such a major disadvantage that it wouldn't be fun for me because it is fun to compare and this would not be an apples to apples comparison if Mew had to use HM moves. So we're not going to do that. We're going to use the same rules I always use, even though, of course, Mew can learn every HM move and thus I don't theoretically need to have other Pokemon. It does actually take time to catch the other Pokemon, so it's worth the time investment in order to not have to have Mew learn those moves. Anyway, on to face Lieutenant Surge. I have taught the TM for Dig at this point. Usually I teach it to Paris, but Mew can learn it, and Dig is 100 base power. I do want to go fast, so I think Body Slam against Voltor maybe won a KO. I'm wrong. Again, just survives on like 1 HP. Knock it out the next turn, but could have gone for Dig. Wouldn't have mattered. Pikachu obviously will be a 1 KO. It has paper thin defenses. And against Raichu, I could try and roll the dice and get the critical hit body slam, which would be one turn. I opt for safety, go for dig. It takes two turns, but it's guaranteed to knock it out. And there goes Lieutenant Surge. Now we get the TM for Thunderbolt, which is kind of nice. And that gives us great coverage, not against every type, but against most types, especially the more difficult Pokemon in the next section. So there's nothing much to say. We can make our way through Rock Tunnel. And once again in Celadon, I do want to do my usual order, which is Giovanni, Shopping, Fly, Lavender, followed by Erica. So let's quickly make our way through the Rocket Game Corner. Giovanni obviously is going to be pretty easy. Bubble Beam against Onyx is a 1 KO, no surprise there. It's also a 1 KO against Rhyhorn. Now, Kangaskhan I didn't think would be a 2 KO with Body Slam, so I go for Dig, hoping it would knock it out in two hits, and thus it would be less risky. In the end, after one Dig hits, 
and then I go for dig again. The second dig hits, it survives, so this was a waste of time. Three body slams would have been the quicker play by far, but hey, that's why I always show first attempts. Mistakes are always going to happen. Not a big one anyway, and we've beaten Giovanni. Now we're going to go shopping, and I'm actually going to go to Saffron and pick up the TM for Psychic. I'm not going to be using any of these TMs right now, but they will be useful in the future. Anyway, Rival 4 is usually pretty easy, and my current moveset is more than sufficient. Thunderbolt on Pidgeotto, 1 KO. Execute, I probably could have taught Ice Beam, but I did want my moves as they were right now, so I didn't do that. Just two body slams. Barrage wastes some time, but what can you do? Gyarados, Thunderbolt. Kadabra, still out speed. Body Slam. And Charmeleon, Bubble Beam. Easy as 3.14159. All right, so with Rebel 4 out of the way, I can easily make it through the Pokemon Tower. And now it's time to go and battle Erika. Or it would have been, except I forgot. I'm always so close to forgetting Erika in every single run I do. Finally, it happened, and I'm not going to notice till a lot later, but there is no strategic reason I'm skipping Erika. Simply forgot about her. In fact, this is probably going to waste a few seconds, but not much more time than that. So because of the mishap, I'm going to go straight to Fuchsia City, into Safari Zone, and get Surf. And then the question, do I go battle Rival Fievel and do Sylph Company first like Mewtwo? Or do I play it safe like I tried to do with Zapdos and battle Koga? I have the TM for Psychic, so we know that's going to be easy. Well, for a bunch of reasons, including one you'll see shortly, I opt to do Sylph Company first. And so, get ready everyone, it's time for everyone's favorite NPC, Rival Fievel. Now, Pidgeot goes for Quick Attack, and Thunderbolt isn't quite a 1 to KO, which isn't surprising considering how close in level we now are. I go for Body Slam since the quicker animation, and knock out Pidgeot. Now, Execute I knew would be annoying. I go for Body Slam, it goes for Poison Powder, honestly the best thing it could probably do. Another Body Slam, it goes for Leech Seed. Not really too concerned about that as you're gonna see. Knock it out with Body Slam, so Leech Seed and Poison doesn't happen. Thank you Generation 1. And it won't happen against Gyarados because Thunderbolt is a Generation 1 miss. Beautiful. Goes for Bite. Gen 1 giveth and Gen 1 taketh away, but Thunderbolt does hit, and I knock out Gyarados. Now, I wasn't sure if Alakazam I'd either outspeed or win a KO. I do both, although I got a critical hit, so that may have mattered. But now, all we have left is Charizard. I no longer have Bubble Beam. I've swapped it for Psychic, but I still do have Thunderbolt, which is super effective. It does way more than half, which is great, because even with Leech Seed, it's still going to be a 2 KO. Going for Leer is great. Slash may have made the battle a little bit closer, but not overly worrisome anyway. And I knock it out with Thunderbolt. Rival Fievel can be very difficult, but with Mew, like Mewtwo, it's very, very easy. And unfortunately, I've used my Antidote already, but I do have potions, so I'm not going to actually heal the poisoning. It is annoying because the text boxes are going to waste a little bit of time, but it wastes significantly more time to go to the Pokemon Center or the healing spot where I have to battle a trainer. It's just the best of the bad options. And besides, neither the Team Rocket member nor Giovanni is very much of an issue. But once I defeat Giovanni, you get to see the real reason I wanted to do Sylph Company first. Because although you typically would think of Mew as a special attacker, its attack is identical to its special attack. And because it can learn every TM in the game, that includes TM-03, Swords Dance, located in Self Company. It would have been nice to get it immediately, but unfortunately that would require extra battles which would waste time, so I have to beat Giovanni first so I can easily go and obtain the TM. I'm also going to pick up the TM for Earthquake, which I can use to replace Dig. Even though they're the same base power, it takes one less turn, which saves time. And so I'm going to change up my moveset, goodbye Thunderbolt, goodbye Dig, Hello, Swords Dance, and Earthquake, but I'm still going to keep Psychic because against Koga, Psychic is a bit better than Earthquake, since Koga's Pokemon have way better defense than Special. Case in point, 1 KO, no, that crit didn't matter. 1 KO, evidence that crit didn't matter. I mean, further evidence that crit didn't matter, and further, further evidence that crit didn't matter. Every single Pokemon is a 1 KO. Psychic Pokemon are very overpowered, and of course, since I did Sylph Company first, it guaranteed them all being 1 KOs, making the Koga battle very fast. And now I have to make the decision whether I want to go to Blaine first. I do have Earthquake and Swords Dance, or do I want to just go to Sabrina? 
Honestly, I think Sabrina's Pokemon are going to be a little bit tougher than Blaine's, so I'm going to do Blaine first, which is hilarious when you think about it. I'm battling Blaine before Erica. Very rare you'll ever see that. Anyway, against Growlithe, no need to set up any Sword Stance. Just go for Earthquake and knock it out. Same thing goes for Ponyta. I got a critical hit against Rapidash. I'm not really sure if it mattered. And I do outspeed Arcanine. Truth be told, probably could have set up a Sword Stance, so this would have been a 1 KO. Arcanine could have used Fire Blast, could have burned. This honestly wasn't the best strategy, but whatever. Another first try victory. And as they say, hindsight is 2020. except for me. My vision is quite poor. So I think with my glasses, it's about 2040, which is not bad. And joking aside, I accidentally ran into a trainer at Sabrina's gym and had forgot to save. So I did battle Blaine again and just set up against Growlithe. So I did realize immediately my mistake and fixed it. But as I show you the rest of this battle, you've pretty much already seen. One thing I should mention is that it is going to be a little slower than Mewtwo going forward, since I have no longer a Pokemon that knows Dig. And I don't really think there is a way around that. It is faster for Mew to have Dig temporarily. And obviously, once we get Earthquake, it's way faster just to use Earthquake. Perhaps I could have reordered it. So I do Koga, Blaine, Sabrina, then I do Rival Fievel. But I don't know if that would have worked out so well, especially without Swords Dance. I think it was just kind of inherent to this run that I'd have to walk out of the gym. Both Blaine and Sabrina cost a little bit of time, but so be it. Anyway, speaking of Sabrina, it is time to battle her now. The keys to this battle, outspeed, one at KO, and with Swords Dance, that's not really a problem. Generation 1 has a badge boost feature, which has a glitchy side effect. Every time your stats are modified, all the badge boosts, which are 12.5% increases to your other stats, are reapplied. So, in other words, when I use Sword Stance, I get faster, more defensive, etc. I only use a single Sword Stance against Kadabra. Please don't confuse me. Great, it didn't. Knock it out with Body Slam. Mr. Mom may outspeed as well, and obviously Body Slam would knock it out crit or no crit. Psychic probably also would have been a 1 KO, but why scroll down? I have Body Slam, knocks out Venomoth. Now I just need to outspeed Alakazam. Thankfully, I do. I think that Sword Stance really did matter. Critical Hit didn't. In fact, I think it does slightly less damage than a Sword Stance. Generation 1 is weird. Doesn't matter. We have beaten Sabrina, and here's when I discover I forgot to battle Erica. I go to Viridian City. I go in the gym, and oh, look at that. The door is locked. That's right. Even though I've beaten all the other gyms, Giovanni's gym only unlocks when you have all seven of the previous gym badges. I decide that this time loss is unacceptable. So even though I'll have to rebattle Sabrina, I'm just going to reset and rebattle her. It will increase the real time, which includes mistakes. That's usually why I don't weigh real time as heavily as in game time, because real time accounts for mental errors like this one. Normally, I would show the second battle since it is the canonical battle that we move forward from. But other than Kadabra using Disable, it's literally the exact same battle. Maybe I am showing it as I'm talking here but there is really no point to go into any kind of depth. You literally have just seen it. But knowing me, I have put the battle on, maybe even sped up in the background. And now that it's done, it's time to battle Erica. This is not going to be challenging at all. I have Psychic and two of her three Pokemon are weak to that. Now this was definitely silly on my part. I go for Body Slam and I was wondering if it would want to KO. It comes close, but doesn't, so she heals. I go for another Body Slam. I decide, okay, I don't want more time loss. Just go for Psychic, knocks out Tangela. Go for Psychic, knocks out Vileplume. And now we are actually ready to battle Giovanni. Or we would be, except I'm me. And I'm like, no, this time loss is unacceptable. So even though the last time I saved was before Sabrina, let's just battle her again. Great. We've battled Sabrina a third time. Pretty much the same as the other two. Let's battle Erica again. Psychic, Psychic, Psychic. Great. No time lost this time. Now, we're ready to battle Giovanni. Now, I do have the TMs for Ice Beam and Blizzard, but I really don't need them. I use a single Sword Stance against Rhyhorn, and then Earthquake, 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 and Earthquake. Oh, it's not a 1 KO, whatever. Psychic. That actually may have been a range, and it's unfortunate I didn't hit it, but we have defeated all eight gyms, and like with Zapdos, I think it's a good time to see how much ground Mew has made up considering it was almost half as fast as Articuno at one point. Well, these are the previous times of Mewtwo, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. Now, 
for the moment of truth before we battle rival number six, Mew. Two hours and 59 minutes, so it has made up time, but Zapdos and Articuno still have a pretty sizable lead for this point of the game, and of course, Mewtwo is going to be totally untouchable. But, remember how I said that Body Slam would be so useful in this run? I think I've demonstrated it was useful. Now it's time for a new attack. Gonna get rid of Body Slam, and I'm gonna teach Rock Slide. Against Rival 6's team, and eventually the champion, Rock Slide is very, very useful. Let's just show you how useful. Now, I got burned, figuratively, when I only set up a single Sword Stance against Giovanni, so I'm gonna set up two against Pidgeot. It has very weak attacks, so I'm not worried. I go for Rock Slide, has a slim chance of missing, but it doesn't, and of course it knocks it out. Actually, probably could have gone for Psychic here, but I go for Earthquake, it knocks out Rhyhorn. And here is where I get incredibly bad luck. I get a critical hit, which ignores my Swords Dance, and so doesn't knock out the Execute, and it uses Stun Spore, so I have to attack second. Awful. Knock it out the next turn, because it goes for Solar Beam. Because Gyarados outspeeds me, it can go for Hydro Pump, does nearly half my remaining HP, and I'm paralyzed. Beautiful. Well, it goes for Leer, which is pretty good. I finally do hit with Rock Slide and Bye Bye Gyarados, but it's not looking good. Even worse, now that Alakazam uses Psy Beam, which is a critical hit, only Confusion would have been worse than that. Earthquake obviously knocks it out, and now I just need Charizard to either attack me with a bad move, or not attack me, and I'll win. Well, it goes for Leer. I could still be paralyzed or miss, neither of which happened. So this battle was definitely slower, but hey, it happens. Not gonna reset because I've already reset enough times in this run. Sometimes you just gotta roll with the bad luck. But it's now time to face the Elite Four. And if you remember, Mewtwo actually had a pretty difficult time with the Elite Four, despite the fact it pretty much was a one try victory against everything else. With Mew though, I do have Sword Stance and the ability to set up, and that could be a huge advantage. Will it be enough to make up the lost time against the legendary birds? Well, let's cue the ice theme and battle everyone's favorite mispronounced Elite Four member, Loralee. Well, Loralee is the ice type gym leader and I actually have the best rock type move. So I'm gonna go for Sword Stance. She goes for takedown, doesn't do too much damage. Go for another Sword Stance, she goes for growl. I decide, all right, plus three could be enough. I don't know about Cloyster, we'll see. I knock out Dugong in one hit. Now, I sometimes think about Gen 2, how Cloyster has horrible special defense, which is not the case in Generation 1, because it has just special. So I go for Psychic, doesn't want it KO, and it goes for Supersonic. That was lucky. Rock Slide would have done more damage, and may have been a 1 KO. So that was a mistake. Whatever, I knock it out the next turn. Now, Slowbro has pretty good defense, so I'm expecting it to a KO, but its only attacking move is Water Gun, so I'm not worried. Earthquake does about half. It goes for Growl, which fails, 25% chance of AI status moves failing, and I go for Earthquake again. For the record, had Growl connected, I would have set up another Sword Stance. In case you were wondering, where's that Rock Slide miss? Here you go, Rock Slide miss against Jinx. Double Slap, the longest attack it could have done. Thankfully not 5 hits. Rock Slide hits the second time, bye bye Jinx. Will it knock out the Lapras? I think so, but I'm not certain. And it does not. Laura Lee heals, and I opt just to go for Psychic to knock it out, and that doesn't knock it out. Lapras goes for Hydro Pump, and I knock it out here, so definitely some time loss against Laura Lee. But considering this is my first battle against her, I'm just going to keep going. I mean, I should be worried about Bruno, and if you don't know why, maybe watch the Zapdos video. It is shocking. Alright, I'll leave. No, I won't, because there's more video left. So let's stop rambling, and let's start battling. I wanted to see how much Earthquake would do. Again, first battle, I'd like to know these things. About half. I actually forgot to heal, so Onyx uses Rock Throw and I have very little HP left. I decide to set up a Sword Stance, but I end up attacking Onyx with Psychic because it's going to one to KO both Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee. And with the Sword Stance, Earthquake should knock out Onyx, but I got a critical hit. Gosh, darn it. And I actually reset. No, this does not count as a win for Bruno. This was me just saying that I'd wasted way too much time, especially with Lapras. And while I continue to insist these times aren't scientific, Mew is a really cool Pokemon, and I want to show it off as best as possible. So, let's cue some new music up, and try to do these battles again with less silly mistakes. This time, I decide to set up all three Swords Dances. It goes for Aurora Beam, a failed Growl, and Aurora Beam. Three opportunities for it to lower my attack, so I got a little lucky that didn't happen. Anyway, now I can knock it out with Rock Slide. 
I don't care how great Cloyster's defense is, unless I got a crit, it's not withstanding that rock slide. Now I'm really hoping that Slowbro will be a 1 at KO with Earthquake. It wasn't, so could have just set up 2, whatever. Super Potion isn't a big deal, and I decided to use Psychic because why not? Jinx is bad defense, so I just go for Earthquake. Why risk the 10% chance of missing like I did last time? And now please don't miss. Awesome, and no critical hit which would have mattered. So, we have beaten Laura Lee much faster. And now it's time to use a better strategy against Bruno. We also have way more HP, so I don't have to worry about running out. Not that I was going to. Anyway, this time I'm going to set up a Sword Stance right away. It uses Rock Throw, which is great. No X Defend, no Harden. And I use Earthquake, Knockout Onyx number one. Now I'm going to go for Psychic and knock out Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee. Earthquake wasn't a 1 at KO against Onyx, but I think Psychic will be, and it was. Which means it would have been a 1 at KO against the other Onyx. Whatever, I'm not resetting. I don't think it'll be a 1 at KO against Machamp, and it's a critical hit, so I have no idea, but whatever. That critical hit makes up for the extra turn with Swords Dance, and unsurprisingly, we have beaten Bruno. Not damageless though, the Rock Throw, remember, at the first turn, but... This is the battle I always fear, no pun intended, I legitimately am always worried about Agatha because she's essentially a lottery with Hypnosis and Confuse Ray. It's bad. So the question is, what will happen turn one? Let's find out. Well, I thought about it and said, you know what, if I outspeed, maybe Earthquake will be a one at KO. Let's try it. It was. That was a good call. And bye bye Gengar. Now, Psychic, I'm pretty sure one at KO. I get a critical hit. I don't think that mattered, but that's two Pokemon down. If Gengar was 1 at KO, logically Haunter will be a 1 at KO, and if you're wondering why not use Psychic, they have way better special than defense. Even though I get same type attack bonus, I'd like people to calculate that out. I think Earthquake is the right play, it's also 10 base power higher. I don't know, that's what I used. Not against Arbok, however, because its special isn't that great, and I do get that same type attack bonus. And now I just have the final Gengar, which isn't as trolly since it doesn't know Hypnosis. Well, as I suspected, it wasn't a 1 to KO, but comes so close that Agatha uses a Super Potion. I'm so glad they have those and not full restores. Thus, I'm able to use Psychic, knock it out, and the Agatha Lottery, truth be told, wasn't very much of a lottery, now was it? I was pretty in control the whole time, which is great. Very good sign. And now I just have Lance and the Champion. I still do have Ice Beam. Do I want to get rid of Psychic for Ice Beam? Decisions, decisions. Well, I thought about it, but opt not to, and decide just to head to Lance with the moves I have. Was it a bad idea? Let's see. Well, Rock Slide will be super effective against three of Lance's Pokemon, so I'm going to use a Swords Dance. Gyarados goes for Hyper Beam, so it's going to recharge, giving me another opportunity to use Swords Dance. It recharges, and I decide I don't want to risk another Hyper Beam. Just going to go for Rock Slide. It doesn't miss and knocks out Gyarados. With two Swords Dance, I'm hoping Earthquake will want to KO Dragonair, and it does, meaning it should probably knock out the second one in one hit, and it would have had I not gotten a critical hit. Thankfully, it misses with Slam, but man, critical hits can be so necessary at some points and so awful at some points. This is why I love Generation 1. Anyway, I knock out Dragonair. Due to the badge boost glitch, I'm pretty sure I outspeed Aerodactyl and knock it out with Rock Slide, and unfortunately, I miss with Rock Slide against Dragonite. Thankfully, it doesn't go for Hyper Beam, it goes for Slam. Critical hit Hyper Beam would have knocked me out and I would have been very angry, but so far, it hasn't been that kind of run. We knock out Dragonite. Now, all I have left is a trainer I have battled six times, actually in this run, seven times previous. I know what I want to do. I'm using the same moves as before, which worked very well. Will I be able to finish off this run here and now on only my second attempt at the Elite Four and first against the champion? Let's see. All right, since it's the final battle, no risks. I set up one Sword Stance, Wing Attack does nothing. Second Sword Stance, Mirror Move, and Pidgeot gets a Sword Stance. Honestly, not the worst, but not the best. Would have rather to wing attack. Third sword stance, it goes for wing attack, which obviously does more damage. But now I'm ready. Please don't miss. Well, it doesn't. Rock slide hits, and that's one down. Now, with those badge boosts, I'm going to outspeed Alakazam and knock it out crit or no crit. So, for once, Alakazam wasn't a worry. And while Rhydon has great defense, super effective Earthquake with three swords dance, no way. Another place a crit would have been annoying, but didn't happen. Looking good so far, but here's the moment of truth. Will Rock Slide knock out Executor? Ah, uh, no, it doesn't, but thankfully it goes for Stomp. That's excellent. Hypnosis would have been very frustrating. Knock it out the next turn. Now I just need Rock Slide to hit two more times and I win. Hits against Gyarados. 
Now we just have Charizard. Please don't miss. And, well, you can see those rocks. They didn't miss. And that was the second quickest run in real time. Yes, including all those resets, only slightly slower than Mewtwo. So had I not reset, it would have actually been faster. And it just goes to show you how the medium slow versus slow level up, Mew is at a much higher level. Four levels for regular Pokemon might not seem like a lot, but for legendary Pokemon, four levels is a big difference. And now the moment of truth. How fast was Mew? Three hours, 27 minutes. <laughs> oh goodness. So Zapdos, Articuno, and Mew all right around the same time. Now, in terms of ranking, I'm gonna put Mew above both Zapdos and Articuno, and here is why. Despite having a huge time disadvantage after Brock, by the end of the run, it was at the same level as Articuno, but I didn't use any rare candies, which is a plus, and then consider the fact its real time was way closer to Mewtwo than Articuno or Zapdos. We're talking like half the time of those two. There's no question it is possibly in like a sub-tier almost above those two. Mew was really, really great. Honestly, it's a shame because if it also started with Psychic, it would have been a very interesting race between Mew and Mewtwo because while Mewtwo would have the better stats, Mew would have the better move pool. And I'm not sure which one would win, but that isn't the way Mew was programmed, so I will never do that kind of a challenge. In fact, we are done with Legendary Pokemon for Generation 1. I will do them in other generations. I'm not sure if I want to do Generation 2 or Fire It and Leaf Green. It's a question I have to ask myself. But we did a lot of Legendaries in July. So in August, we're going to be focusing on some of the most difficult and tedious impossible challenges I've been working on throughout July. I work on them slowly so I don't get burnt out. But a bunch of them are almost ready for me to release. And that's part of the reason why I've been working on some of these easier, but not necessarily less interesting challenges. Stay tuned. Take care, everyone.